Hi, my name is Kerry Riley, Director of Aboriginal Health and Research Translation for Central Adelaide Local Health Network. I'm of Nut and Jetty descent, I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother, wife, sister, Aboriginal community member. This year's NAIDOC theme, Because of Her We Can, means many different things. For me, it evokes um, many different feelings. Uh, for myself as a daughter, as a mother, as a sister, as a wife, as a, as a grandmother or a nana. Um, but above all, it reminds me of the really unique and special role that Aboriginal women um, have in our society and what they contributed to over time. Um, the history of our Aboriginal women and their continued journey that they endure, both in a, in a contemporary setting, is like no other in Australian society. Um, and often the stories of our women go unspoken. This year's theme also reminds me of the amazing quiet achievers and the work that we also need to continue to do um, for equity in terms of life expectancy, um, education, employment, um, opportunities, economic security and above all the safety for Aboriginal women and children. And I think that this theme, this year's theme epitomises all of those things and it reminds us to reflect on where we've been and where we're going, but also what we also have to celebrate. Um, our women are amazing. Um, they come in all shapes, forms, um, and I think that that's something also to be recognised because there's beauty in Aboriginal culture, there's beauty in pain, and there's beauty um, in the successes of our community, and I think it's this year's theme gives us an opportunity to celebrate all of, all of those things. Um, I think also too, it's an opportunity for all of the community to get together and not just Aboriginal community, it's an opportunity for non-Aboriginal people to come and experience the successes of Aboriginal communities, of individuals um, and what's actually been achieved. NAIDOC's also a time I think that we can take stock of where we've been but also what, can, what we still need to do. Um, I think it's a great time to showcase all the amazing things that are happening at local levels, within organisations, within communities, within families, at a state level but also nationally um, and I just think it's a really positive time of the year where we can come together to demonstrate that we are a resilient community and that there are lots of things to be incredibly proud of um, and to be celebrated but also a time to think about what more needs to be done and how do we progress the journey. I think there are lots of opportunities for the Aboriginal community and non-Aboriginal community to come together to share history. It's really important to have a shared understanding of what that history is um, because that speaks volumes about how we can progress our reconciliation journey as well. Aboriginal people are Australia's First Nations people. We have a long and enduring connection to this country um, and that's a really, really important story to tell irrespective of how painful that that might be. Um, for both our Aboriginal community and non-Aboriginal community to understand and accept that history. And it is a shared history. Um, since colonisation, it is a shared history. There are plenty of opportunities. And I think within workplaces and communities, whether it's sporting groups, whether it's through schools, whether it's in your place of employment or education, there are safe places for non-Aboriginal people to ask those questions and unpack their own knowledge of Aboriginal history. I think we rely heavily on um, mainstream media to inform us, but there are other ways to actually get that information around Aboriginal history. In terms of um, how we might celebrate or share information about the journeys of Aboriginal women, again, there are a number of places and spaces where that can actually occur. For us, um, the role of the Gladys Elphick um, Women's Committee, as well as the South Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Women's Alliance is another opportunity. The Grannies Group, um, an amazing group of Aboriginal women who have led lots of conversation and lobbied and advocated in this space around Aboriginal women's issues. Um, we also have amazing people like Kimberly Wanganen who heads up this um, South Australian Aboriginal Women's Safety Strategy. So there are places where we can actually share information and get information about Aboriginal women in leadership. And we're not necessarily talking about women in leadership positions, but also leadership in their own communities, within their own families, within their own networks, and the important role that Aboriginal women play in that space um, of nurturing, not only children, but in care roles, those natural extensions of, 
who they are, um, not only as Aboriginal women, but as women in general. Aunty Gladys um, was a remarkable woman of her time um, who had great influence around community, both in the Aboriginal community and much more broadly than that. Her work has been, had an enduring legacy um, throughout, even into contemporary Aboriginal society today with the establishment of Nankamurra Yunti, Aboriginal Legal Rights Movement, Townsley College, and generally across the Aboriginal Affairs portfolio. A lot of Aboriginal female leadership um, that doesn't necessarily come in the form of a role of director, for example, or team leader or manager. Um, we see great examples of leadership throughout community, and that might be somebody leading family conversations. It might be somebody providing extended support to family members. That is a form of leadership um, that often goes unrecognised or unspoken about. And that is a natural extension of Aboriginal women in their communities. And I think um, we often don't think about that type of leadership when we think of leadership. Um, so for me, I think that there are uh, multiple examples of amazing Aboriginal women leadership. And it doesn't necessarily always need to reflect on eldership or statesmanship in that space. We have a number of amazing young women leading great initiatives in Aboriginal community. Um, both with their, within their peers, but also with younger people um, through good mentoring. Um, and some really good examples of that are young people like Nicole Gollan with the City of Adelaide Council, Tani Sutton, um, New York Marathon runner. Um, they're just a couple of examples of what's actually happening in that space. Nisha Cash, a great, amazing artist. Jessica Wishart, some really amazing women. It also, we have great eldership um, through the Aboriginal Grannies Group, um, but also people like Faith Thomas, who was Australia's first Aboriginal female cricketer, um, who was recognised this year through Reconciliation Week. Um, she's another example of a trailblazer. Um, Lowitra O'Donoghue, with her great work through ATSEC, um, great advocacy, lobbying, over many, many years to make difference, not only to Aboriginal women, but also to the Aboriginal community um, and our place as people in Australian society. Um, other amazing Aboriginal women that we've had in this space is our current patron of the Gladys Elphick Committee, Honey Shirley Peasley, who headed up the 1967 referendum campaign, Poster Girl, um, who continues to have an influential space um, and platform to voice Aboriginal issues for not only Aboriginal women but the community more broadly. And then again we have our amazing quiet achievers um, who go unspoken but who have endured per great personal pain yet continue to share their experiences um, and continue to provide support to non-Aboriginal people who want to be educated around cultural safety and cultural competency and I take my hat off to those individuals with a particularly special mention of Sharon Gollum. So from my perspective, a culturally responsive health system to improve outcomes for Aboriginal people should have in place measurable processes and practice that can identify cultural safety. But I think it's much more simpler than that. I think it's purely people suspending their own values, their own beliefs, their own ideas around what should fit for everybody. It's an individual experience. And I think that if people were generous of time um, and be willing to suspend those ideas and values to actually listen to what the needs are of the patient or the consumer at that point in time, they're going to be individual experiences and we can't just use a broad brush approach and go, I treat everybody the same because the same isn't the same that everybody's going to come with the same needs. They're an individual need and I think it really is as basic as listening and being respectful. The message that I have for non-Aboriginal people during an adult week is come and embrace the opportunity to ask the questions that you may not have felt comfortable to ask. Immerse yourself in the celebrations of NAIDOC and understand um, that there are amazing things about Aboriginal community that can be celebrated. There are amazing successes. There are ample opportunities throughout NAIDOC week um, to, be, to immerse yourself in an event. Um, and even if you just come just to experience it, but participation is gonna help you um, to understand it a little bit more. Um, so I'd strongly encourage anybody to come and enjoy NAIDOC week. Take five minutes, um, yeah, and come out. My message for 
our community during NADOT week is go out, enjoy it, celebrate it, immerse yourself into it, catch up with family, catch up with friends, showcase your amazingness as an Aboriginal person and celebrate. This year's NADOT week theme 2018 is Because of Her We Can.